Hi everyone, it's Nicole here today, and today we are going to be doing some paper weaving. Really fun technique and just a few supplies are needed. So as you can see here, I have a bunch of scrap that I from my stash. I'm just going to cut various strips here of pattern paper. So I have anywhere from a quarter of an inch up to three quarters of an inch. And in each pattern, I'm just doing a variety of each. So some of them are skinnier, some of them are wider. Um, there's no really wrong way to do it. And it's a good way to use up some of your extra little bits of paper that you really love and a good way to mix up different colors and patterns too from different manufacturers. So for some of them I'm going to do double the amount just because I like both sides of the pattern paper. Uh, but for the most part I think all of these except for this floral one here I've just done the one side. So if you want to use both sides make sure that you cut enough strips from your pattern paper to you know, make enough use of both sides of the pattern paper. Now there's no really set amount of strips that you need for a project like this. It really kind of depends on how large you want your paper weaving mat to be. Um, for my intention for this page is to create a large kind of photo mat for my um, photo and use that as my decoration and everything. And so it really just depends on what you, how big you intend to make it. So as you can see, I've just laid one of each of the strips of paper horizontally onto my base pattern background. Now, there's nothing to be glued until the very end. Um, so I have one of each of those strips, and they're all very, a variety of sizes, as you can see. And then I'm just going in with alternate strips going horizontally this time, just weaving in, just like basket weaving we did back in kindergarten, where you go over and under those paper strips. As you go through this process, you really want to try to snag, snug everything up tightly as best you can. If you want to leave a space in between the weaving, you can totally do that too. This creates a bit of a different feel and a different look. Of course, you don't have to make all these strips a different size um, as I did here, but it's just a kind of a pretty variation. You could definitely do the same thing with all wider strips or all skinny strips, all strips of the same size. Um, so you could do this over and over again and have kind of a different uh, look each time. So it goes pretty quick. I, for the most part, what I learned as my tip is kind of starting at that end there and then pulling the strips in after I've woven them over and under. Um, I've, as you can see here, going through each one kind of wiggles it a little bit too much and it, I found it caused the rest of my design to kind of get unstraight. So if you're a little bit um, OCD, I guess, in that respect, you want to keep everything kind of lined up and perfect, I would recommend you start at the end of the strips and then just pull it up once you've woven them over and under each of those paper pieces. So as I'm going through this also, I'm changing up my pattern and size of these strips. I'm not I'm trying not to use like two of the green in a row, two of the black in a row, two, two of the, yes, the same yellow in a row. I'm really trying to add a little bit of variety throughout so that it, there's no, um, it will be obvious if you did something like that, if you had two of the same kind of pattern side by side. So as you go along, if you need to cut more strips, you can of course totally do that. Um, and you'll know whether you need to cut a wider strip or a thinner strip, all depending. So you can see that this really stretches things all the way out through your, your supplies. Now I'm just going to add a little bit of tape runner <laughs> adhesive here underneath the ends of the paper strips. I'm not going to do anything here in the middle of the woven area. I'm only going to tuck down these outer edges here. And once I do that, then I'm going to go ahead and give this thing a haircut. So I'm kind of making sure everything's snug where I want it to be. I do want it to be fairly tight for my weak woven design. And I'm going to keep that all tight. And then I'm going to go around and just no measurement involved here. I'm just going to take my scissors, as you can see, and I'm just trimming shorter and longer strips um, as I kind of like them along the edge. So it looks kind of like a rough basket weave around the edge of my paper mat here. And so I'm going to kind of line up my photo, make sure that my strips are long enough. And I've realized now that I need to add just a few more to make it a little bit more long on one edge, more of like a rectangle versus a square. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I'm just going to finish adding in a few more pieces, adding in some adhesive as I go, just to kind of keep this, the little skinnier ones from flying away. So very simple and I think a really pretty look to get a lot of pattern paper onto the back of your page. So I'm going to add my photo here. I'm going to turn my mat how I want it. I think I like it this way the best. I'm going to snug everything in one last time and just get all those pattern pieces down. And then I'm going to add my photo with some um, black card stuck in behind. I just felt like it needed a bit of a photo mat just because there is so much of that busy pattern paper that that photo mat's just going to help kind of balance out everything onto the page. 
And I like using foam adhesive because it kind of makes everything pop. So I'm going to do um, some behind my photo and I'm actually going to do some behind my photo mat so it's lying a little bit popped up on my page and not just lying flat onto the base of the background. So I have tons of foam adhesive. It is my friend and so I'm just going to add a few all the way along through the back of this here and then I'm going to peel that off and get that popped up onto my project. So there we go. I'm going to add my photo now and I'm just kind of digging through my embellishments. At this point I knew I was going to do the weaving but hadn't really thought much about what I was going to do next so I'm really going to go through just digging through some die cuts that I had and try to find some things that match well as well as some little bits of bling that I wanted to add. I did find this really uh, perfect title for my page so that was from Crate Paper Carousel I believe. So I'm going to use that as the title for my page and it adds a little bit of that nice sparkle and a little heart die cut here and then I found these rub-ons here from the Auburn Lane collection from Pink Paisley. So I have some bits left over from another project and these rub-ons work really really well. You can say they are like very buttery. You can just get them right on there nicely. So I'm adding some tiny little bits there in around my photo and I thought I was going to use this leaf and heart shape from a die cut set that I had but as you'll see that change I changed my mind later. So again just adding some more of those tiny little bits here um, onto that brown background and if you don't want to rub them on and take the chance that another rub on will rub onto your project um, you can always just trim each of those out and then rub them in place too because I've had that happen where you're going to get an extra little bit rubbed on that you don't want. So now uh, is the part that I like but some people really hate and that is the fussy cutting. So I really love this floral pattern paper from Echo Park or is it Curtabella? Um, and I, so I decided it would be perfect to fussy cut a whole bunch of those flowers and stems from that pattern paper and then just build around my photo and my title area with that. So I'm going to go ahead and just fussy cut some of those things out. I did do a video a few weeks ago, actually I guess it was about a month ago, um, regards to card making and fussy cutting. So there's some tips on that design with video if you're able to go back and take a look. I would love it. And now that I've cut them out, you can see I'm just going to kind of start sticking things down on my page. So I'll start with my title, and then I'm going to add those flower pieces in around uh, that title and my photo area. So I have some zots here, some really big glue dots, and I'm just adding those to the back of the pattern paper that we've cut out. And these really hold those uh, floral pieces in place. They're pretty dainty, so you don't want to make you want to make sure they get stuck down well, and you don't want to have them falling off later on. So I find if I use a glue dot for something like this, I know that for certain those are going to be stuck there. So I've decided I've given up on my other stem piece that I pulled from a different die cut pack, but I do want to use that heart, so I'm going to stick that in that border, bottom, sorry, right hand corner of my photo. And then I'm adding these really pretty wood buttons from their One Canoe 2, they're from the Twilight collection. And then some more fussy cutting because I realized I should have done a few more longer pieces. So I'm just going to add one or two more here of this pretty kind of flower sprig that you see. And I want to just say I, I really love these Chamel Glitter Girl scissors. I'm so happy you got them. Normally I'm a smaller scissor kind of girl, but these ones are really great for fussy cutting. Um, even though they're a larger, they're easy to handle. So more um, glue dots. I'm going to take out five little smaller ones here. And for the sequins, I find these are the best way to kind of get sequins to stick and not to lift up. I've used wet glue before, and then I find that later on my wet glue has dried and my sequins are popping off. But I find if I use a little bit of a glue dot, as these ones here, those sequins stay where they're supposed to be. So I'm just going to take these here. These again are from the Auburn Lane collection from Pink Paisley. And they're just, I'm using some of the pink ones just to get a little bit more pink into this project. And I'm just going to kind of scatter a few in and around my photo. And really, I don't think I have a whole lot left to add to this. So I think at this point, I just want to add a little bit of black. I feel like every project should have a list of tiny little sprinkle of black somewhere in there. The black just helps balance out some of those other colors. So I have some black ink that I'm just going to add droplets to my background. And I don't have a lot of room for journaling, but I always make sure to at least add the dates. Really love those fussy cut flowers. They add just a nice little subtle dimension. And this paper weaving, as I was going through this video, I just had another idea. So you'll be seeing this again for me for sure. I hope you're going to give this one a try. It's really fun, really easy, and a great way to stretch your stash. So see you again next time on Designed with Nicole. Bye-bye.